Hey everybody, this is Kyle Sears from Zoll Medical. Today's Zoll X-Series Tips and Tricks video is going to focus on pad compatibility. Uh, it's a question we've been getting a lot over the last couple months. Um, recently, a lot of hospitals have switched to Zoll for their in-house crash cart defibrillators, and that has resulted in a couple different types of defib pads showing up being supplied to the pre-hospital provider. So we just want to make sure you guys feel comfortable with how those pads work, how they connect to your X-Series monitor, and what functionality uh, those would provide to you in the field. So let's take a look. All right, the first step in determining pad compatibility is figuring out what type of defib cable you have on your X-Series. This cable, called a one-step cable and adapter, is considered a universal cable. It's going to be able to accommodate any Zoll branded pad that you'd come across. In the pre-hospital world, the most common pad is this, the CPR stat pad. It has this connection, which is also consistent with any of our AEDs that you'd come across in the field. You plug directly into this adapter once the pads are applied to the patient, CPR is performed, you're going to get real-time CPR feedback automatically on the screen. So that's one option. What we're seeing more and more Zoll-equipped hospitals providing in Illinois are what are called one-step pads. A one-step CPR complete adult pad has this connection. Right? You may have come across this recently. If I try to plug these two together, they don't fit. So in that situation, I remove this adapter. So I'm going to press down on here, take my thumb, push on here, and you'll separate those two. This cable now is able to accommodate the one-step cable connection. When that gets plugged in, two things happen. There's a short detected message on the screen, which causes an asystolic rhythm to appear, which will go away once the pads are applied to the patient. It'll then pick up the patient's actual heart rate. And then it also overrides the heart rate indicator. So if you're used to getting a heart rate off the pulse ox cable, when these pads are plugged in and you see that message, you will not get a heart rate off the pulse ox unless you go down here, you select your heart rate pulse rate selected source, SpO2, and now you will. This is also true for pediatric pads. So one step pediatric CPR pads have the same connection point we just looked at. They plug in directly, but they take it a step further. Short detected, asystolic rhythm. But in this case, it's switched to pediatric mode. So from a cardiac arrest perspective, it tries to manage as much as it can without you having to do much on the monitor. The biggest change is that it's going to drop the joule settings from 120 joules down to 50 joules automatically. As a BLS provider, you can allow the machine to operate it and auto escalate from 50, 70 to 85 joules. As an ALS provider, you have the option to dial in your two, two to four joules per kilogram based on the patient's weight. Same deal, once the pads are applied to the patient's chest, you start performing CPR, you'll get real-time CPR feedback on those pediatric patients. So hopefully this clears up any questions that you guys have come across recently. Please let me know if you need more information or need help with anything at all. Thanks for your time.